Yeah, I think as we come closer to Black Friday and the holiday season, Jordan, like I agree, it's super important we do these buyer's guides. Like I personally know a guy proposed to his wife with a Canon Rebel and suffice to say that marriage didn't work out very well. So yeah, there's a lot at stake. Welcome back Deep Your TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here and yes, it is approaching the holiday season. It is very important that you spend your money wisely and get the right gift for the ones that you love. What we thought we'd do today is focus on the mid-range enthusiast market because this is where a lot of people that are really excited about photography are spending their dollars. So we're going to look at four very competitive mid-range mirrorless cameras today. Let's get started. So the first category I want to get into is the looks of the camera, the ergonomics, the customizability. These are very important things. And in fourth place, I'm going to give it to the Sony a6400. Although they have improved their menus and their grip, the grip feel is still very questionable. On top of that, we've got still poor touch controls, very limited functionality, convoluted, confusing menus, and uh, the dual dial functionality is supposed to make a camera faster. But if you have to use your thumb for both dials, it's not really any quicker for you. Now in third place, this is a tough one. It's a very close third. It's the Canon EOS M6 II. I actually love the way this camera looks. It's got a great grip, fantastic dual dials. The touch interface is easy to use. Canon's menus are really good. So why is it not making it into our second place? It was so close, but I think I still have to take away the fact that we've got that removable EVF. Although it comes in a lot of packages with the camera, it is still an additional expense and it does limit the use of external flash or EVF. You gotta pick one or the other. In number two, we have the Fuji X-T30, and I bet you thought we were gonna make that number one because we keep going on about how beautiful they are. They are gorgeous cameras, but it's really about the control structure. I like that we have an autofocusing joystick. That's awesome, and it's got tons of dials. My, my biggest benefit for the X-T30's handling is you don't get pigeonholed into using it the way they want you to. You can set it up as a simple retro design camera or as a modern electronic dial camera. It really is very customizable. And so our number one winner for overall ergonomics, we're gonna give it to the Nikon Z50. It really does look and feel professional. If we're talking about a camera that's great for enthusiasts, they're gonna appreciate that more rugged feel and that more functional capability. I do love the fact that we've got a great EVF, a fantastic large grip, the dials feel fantastic and solid. You get weather sealing, which really does feel like it's gonna stand up to the elements. And the touchscreen interface does work well. The only thing I would say is you cannot use the touchscreen as an autofocus joystick when the camera's up to your eye, but you still have that four-way controller on the back. And so overall, it's a very professional, very confidence-inspiring feel. Our next category is image quality. And of course, this is very important because this is our end result. This is what enthusiasts are looking for, great images. Now, from the number one position in handling, the Nikon Z50 unfortunately falls to fourth place here. It's not a bad sensor, but it's an older sensor, very similar to what we would have found in the Nikon D500. It's the lowest resolution of the bunch. And there are no positive trade-offs for that lower resolution. We're still getting basically the same kind of low light performance and dynamic range as the competition. So that does sit it in fourth place. In third place, we're gonna give it to the Sony a6400. It's 24 megapixel sensor is a proven performer, and that's just about the right amount of resolution for most people's needs. You get good low light performance, and you get good dynamic range out of the sensor as well. Uh, it does have a somewhat slower readout, so if you're shooting electronic shutter, you're gonna get a little bit of a diagonal in your shots. Uh, overall as well, JPEG color has improved, but I would still say the populous vote is that Sony's color isn't the greatest. In second place, we're gonna give the runner-up prize to the Fuji X-T30. We love this sensor. 26 megapixels, great image quality overall. It's got a very fast sensor readout, which means that if you're shooting silent shutter modes, you're not gonna get rolling shutter and wobbly diagonals. You get nice straight lines. But overall, it's also great color. Fuji are universally loved for the film simulation modes. We love the JPEGs we get out of the sensor. And our first place win goes to the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. And this new sensor is fantastic. 33 megapixels of resolution, but you're getting the same low light performance, very similar dynamic range to the competition. And I should say that all of these four cameras are delivering awesome photos. The differences are largely marginal, but the Canon is giving us that resolution bump, which is great for cropping or large print sizes with really no downside. So that makes it the clear winner. Our next category is video, and where is Jordan? Well, he forgot that he was gonna be on camera today, and frankly, he looks like 
So he don't want to do it. So you're stuck with me instead, but that's okay. Let's get right into our number fourth place. It actually does go to the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. First off, we love that they got rid of the crop in 4K. That was amazing, but unfortunately, it is now soft 4K, and that's just a really big hit. Now, on top of that, the Canon EOS M6 Mark II doesn't have a flat profile or any log profile, so you can have a really hard time dealing with contrast. So your 4K video, although great with the excellent dual pixel AF, is going to be soft and have blown highlights. Now in third place we have the Nikon Z50, and Nikon's actually done a really good job improving their video game. We get decent autofocus performance in video with the Z50, uh, we do get sharp video as well, and uh, you do get a flat profile, that's not bad, it, it helps you to deal with some dynamic range issues. However, we do not have a log profile, and the two cameras above this do absolutely have that. Our second place runner up, it's gonna be the Sony a6400. Now right off the bat, it's biggest downside, it's poor rolling shutter performance. So you gotta watch camera movements on this camera, but everything else is proven and effective. Sony been in the video game a long time. You get sharp 4K video, you get cumbersome, but very effective autofocus on this camera and video, and you get fantastic log profiles, HLG flat profiles. It really does give an earnest videographer the tools that they need. Our number one winner goes to the Fuji X-T30. Fantastic video quality, but so much beyond that. I mean, great color, but you also get 10-bit recording to external devices. You also get a headphone jack through the USB adapter. That's also unique. The other cameras can't do that. You're getting great manual controls, the least amount of rolling shutter out of any of the cameras, and decent autofocus performance. So although the Sony gives you good video capabilities, if you're really into high-quality creative output, the X-T30 punches way above its price point. Autofocus performance is such a critical thing for people to get a high success rate in their photography. So in our number four position, we are gonna give it to the Fuji X-T30. Now the Fuji X-T30 has some really good pluses. I love the joystick controller for autofocus on the back, and Fuji has improved their eye detect game in a big way. I still do find though that you have to get physically close with the X-T30 before face and eye detect work effectively, and we still did have some accuracy issues, a little bit of misses here and there. Overall though, they've improved in a big way, and it is such a close battle between third and fourth. Just barely squeaking into third place, we've got the Nikon Z50. Its autofocus performance is so close to the X-T30, but it does pick up faces and eyes from a little bit further away. About the same hit rate as well, sometimes it's just a bit off on the pupil, but it does an overall fantastic job. Otherwise, the autofocus performance is quite fast. I like the four-way controller if I'm using gloves. It's a larger interface to move things around, and I do have a touchscreen interface that works as well. My only real complaint, I wish that when I brought the camera up to my eye, I could use my thumb on the touchpad to move my autofocusing point around. In number two place, we've got the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, and again, this camera is just a story about big improvements over what Canon was lacking in the past. Its dual pixel AF performance is fantastic as always, and actually improved from the older system. I also love the interface. It's one of the easiest cameras to get a handle on and get your camera focusing exactly where you want it. My only real complaint on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II when it comes to the AF performance is that you don't have any sort of joystick or control pad. You're stuck with the touch screen, but I think most people by this point are used to that kind of interface. In the number one position, there is just no arguing that the wind goes to the Sony a6400. Their real-time autofocus tracking is very intelligent. Their eye detect is tenacious, and it seamlessly switches back and forth from eyes to faces to tracking focus without you having to give any sort of input. You do get a control pad interface on the back as well as a basic touchscreen interface, but largely the beauty of the Sony camera is that once you set it, you can forget it and still get an incredibly high success rate. If you're trying to shoot portraits or fast moving objects, kids, sports, even pets with its animal detect eye autofocus capabilities, the Sony a6400 is the easiest and the most successful. Now you can't make great images without great lenses, so that is our final category. At the bottom in number four is gonna be the Nikon Z50. You could put in the caveat that the newest player to the market in the APS-C realm, but the two lenses that come with the camera are cheap feeling, and they really didn't blow me away for image quality. Their roadmap consists of just the 18 to 150 lens, which although useful, is not very exciting. My biggest complaint though, you're reliant on using expensive Z-mount lenses or an FTZ adapter with the F-mount lenses. Now, this is useful if you already have Nikon equipment, but if you're coming new to the table, looking for a brand new camera and don't have any glass, it's really not going to excite you. 
Now, surpassing the Nikon Z50 and taking third place is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Although they're still in a similar boat to Nikon where they're relying on their full-frame legacy glass to really round out the lineup, at least they do have a nice stable of lenses now. Some decent zooms, uh, they've just released the 32mm uh, prime lens, which is a fantastic lens, and overall you now have a lot of prime lenses in your pocket that are very affordable and fairly bright. So you do have a good family here. As well, Sigma has just announced lens support for this mount, so that's a nice positive. In second place, we're going to give it to the Sony a6400. We have criticized Sony for not releasing a lot of APS-C lenses, but they did just come out with a new 70 to 350 telephoto lens. That's exactly what we're asking for, an affordable telephoto. And to be fair, there is a pretty extensive APS-C line of lenses. You also get awesome third-party support from many different manufacturers, and you do have an expensive full-frame line of lenses that you can use as well, but at least without an adapter. So second place, well-deserved for Sony. The number one place we got to give it to the Fuji X-T30. It just has the best line of lenses for APS-C dedicated to this mount. And you've got everything. I mean, you've got compact zoom lenses that are affordable. You've got professional telephotos and general purpose lenses. You've got really nice fast aperture prime lenses. And the real benefit with the Fuji system is that you can pretty much tackle any kind of photography from wildlife to specialized portrait to just casual travel. You do have some third party support. It is limited, but my biggest benefit fit here too. If you are starting out as somebody wanting to get a good kit lens right off the bat, Fuji offers the 18-55. to It's a 2.8 to 4 and by far the best kit lens you can get for your money out of any of the competition. The real advantage here, no matter what kind of photography you do, Fuji has you covered. So if we tally our final scores, it looks like the Fuji X-T30 is our overall winner, followed closely by the Sony a6400. This does make sense because these two companies have committed the most effort to the APS-C game. But I think the most important takeaway to remember is that all four of these cameras have some very unique benefits and are very capable photographic tools. Hopefully this buyer's guide helps you make a better decision on which one is going to fit your needs, what you can live with, and what you can live without. So we hope that that helps you out. And if coming up to the holiday season this is a gift for a special someone hopefully this buyer's guide will keep you from making a hideous mistake which could have long-term ramifications for years to come now as usual please leave comments below or check us out and contact us on instagram and twitter we do actually respond to your comments and don't forget please subscribe to the channel let's get those numbers up enjoy your holiday season thank you so much for joining us